Welcome back, Careblazer. In today's video, I want to talk about neuroplasticity and how you can use neuroplasticity to help your loved one improve their thinking, help them be able to engage in tasks better, help them grow their brain size, and also help you prevent or reduce your chances of getting dementia yourself. Sounds pretty amazing, right? Careblazer, have you ever heard of the word before neuroplasticity? Neuro meaning brain, plasticity meaning plastic, otherwise malleable, adaptable. So the brain's ability to be adaptable and malleable. Careblazer, before I forget, my care course is open for a limited time. If you'd like to be able to go through the challenges of caregiving with a little more ease, I put a link in the description below where you can learn more. I have a pretty amazing group of Careblazers inside of my care course. I hope to personally welcome you as one of my newest members. All right, let's get back to that video. Our brains have an amazing ability to adapt and rebuild after injury. This is why it's so important for people after a stroke to be able to go through rehabilitation so their brain can start to rewire and learn how to talk again and walk again. But the brain's ability to improve goes beyond those who have had a stroke and who have had a traumatic brain injury. It extends to people like you, to me, and your loved one with dementia. The ability for the brain to rebuild and improve has been proven in a variety of studies, including brain imaging studies and also functional studies where they took a look at people's ability to be able to do things in their day. One of the best ways to maintain and improve overall cognitive functioning is through exercise. Individuals who have a consistent and regular exercise practice tend to have lower chances of dementia and have greater improvement in their cognitive abilities. There's even evidence that exercise can grow, increase the size of certain areas of the brain, including the area that's most significantly impacted in Alzheimer's disease called the hippocampal area or the hippocampus. After the age of 50, people start to show a decline in their hippocampus at a rate of one to 2% per year. That's people without Alzheimer's disease. So anything that could help preserve, maintain that area, and possibly even regrow that area is going to be really important when it comes to the prevention of cognitive decline. In 2011, there was a study where they took at 120 people and they put them into two different groups. One group was a walking group where they walked three days a week for around 30 to 45 minutes a day at a moderate walking pace. The other group was a kind of toning stretching group where they participated in toning and stretching exercises for 35 minutes a day for three days a week. MRI brain scans were conducted at the beginning of the study six months into the study, and one year after the study. At the beginning of the study, all of the participants had about the same size of their hippocampus. There was no significant differences in any of the people in terms of the size of their hippocampus. But after one year, the stretching group showed about a 1% decrease in the size of their hippocampus and the walking group showed a 2% increase in the size of their hippocampus. And this study was conducted with all older adults. So what this shows us is that even in old age, the brain has the ability to grow, to improve simply through exercise, as this study showed. So rather than decreasing in size at a rate of 1% to 2% after the age of 55, this group that did three days of walking around 35 to 45 minutes a day showed a 2% increase in the size of their hippocampus. There was also a 2020 study that showed that people with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease who exercised on a regular basis were able to maintain and engage in their functional abilities longer than people who did not regularly exercise and had Alzheimer's disease. 
When I talk about functional abilities, that's really important. And in fact, it's a criteria in order to be diagnosed with dementia. You have to show a deficit. You have to show an impairment in your functional abilities, meaning functional abilities of being able to um, eat, cook, drive, manage finances, as well as basic functional abilities, such as being able to eat, walk, dress, use the toilet, right? So of people who were already diagnosed with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease, those who engaged in regular exercise were able to maintain those functional abilities longer and able to perform them better than the people who didn't exercise. So regardless of the age or cognitive condition, so for people who without dementia, you, and for people who have dementia, your loved one, especially in the mild to moderate stages, you can still benefit from a regular exercise routine. Now for individuals who are already in the severe stage of dementia, that likely means they're already having problems walking, getting out of bed, maybe swallowing, like that severe stage, this is not gonna do anything. But for the people with mild to moderate dementia and for people like you and me, incorporating a regular exercise routine can literally regrow brain cells in your brain, especially in the areas that are most impacted by Alzheimer's disease. So if there's anything that this short video does, I hope it's to inspire you to figure out a way to incorporate some type of aerobic exercise into your routine. And obviously, Careblazer, talk to your doctor, talk to your loved one's doctor about what would be considered safe and reasonable and doable for you and your loved one based on your medical conditions and abilities right now. I'm going to include a link to both of those studies, those two studies are linked below in the description. If you click on it, it will take you to the full study so that you can read it on your own. I'll be back next week with another video. In the meantime, keep up the great work. Bye.